Shalom Amakim. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekha, Kodash. Uh, Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, and there is no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who definitely rule well, and honors and citations to the elect. So I, I want to play this, this quick clip, man, from South Park. <laughs> Cause it's like, hey man, this is how I feel towards uh these so-called Christians who are trying so hard to uh, uh, uh see the light. They're trying so hard to be men of the Lord, but yet they just they just can't get it. You know, let me just play this real quick, man. Explain it to me. Why do people think I'm a gay fish? <laughs> cause cause you like fish things, man. Come on, man. Don't you get it, please? Just get it, man. Why? Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Don't you get it, man? Please, just get it, man. You know? Don't you get it? Please, just get it. You know? So in this episode, man, this is like Kanye West. There's a joke going around. You know? Ask him, do you like fish dicks, man? Instead of saying sticks, they say, you know, the, the, the freaking D word. And if they say, yeah, you do, he says, well, that makes you a gay fish. You know, some some stupid and corny. And everybody gets the joke except for Kanye West. So he's going to extreme measures to understand why people keep calling him a freaking gay fish. And that's why this guy calls me see like, don't you get it, man? Please just get it. You know, and so lucky for the bullshit, you know, but the point behind it is that's how I feel about these so-called Christians, man. Like, don't you get it? Please just get it, man. You know, so let me get some uh, uh scriptures, but they ain't going to get it, man. And they never will get it until uh, 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 they're reincarnated in the kingdom. Why is that? Because first off, this truth ain't for everybody. That's. That's one thing within itself, man. That's like another lesson within itself. This truth, they don't understand. Look, man, you don't understand that this ain't for everybody. We all, the whole earth hold hands together, swinging back and forth, you know? No, this ain't for everybody. So that's one thing that you don't even understand. Uh, uh, what, did, what did the disciples say to uh, 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 the Messiah? Let me get that. Let me get that, man. He told him straight up. So, the fact that you come in and this, this is for everybody, God loves everybody, and everybody could be saved, it goes to show you that you're already off. You're done already. I could end the lesson right there. Okay? This is Mark. Chapter four, verse 11. And he said unto them, I started 10. And when they, and when he was alone, they that were about him with the 12 acts of him, the parable. And he said unto them, unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of the most high. Did he say unto everybody? He said unto you, they were in front of a large crowd, man. They was even in front of a large crowd. Look, verse one. And the whole multitude, see, was by the sea on land, gathered unto him a great multitude. So even everybody that wanted to follow Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, right, the Savior of Israel, Everybody who, who wanted to follow him and that was there amongst him, he wasn't even telling all of them the, the mysteries of the kingdom. He didn't even want all of them to know the mysteries of the kingdom. So then when they were separated and when they was alone, that's why he said, and he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of the most high. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. 
lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. See? So it's not given to everybody to know the 100% truth, man. It's not given to everybody to have a ticket in that chariot of salvation, man. It's not for everybody. But a so-called Christian will tell you it's for everybody. Anybody could come in. So then why did Yahweh shy? Why didn't he just tell the truth to the whole great multitude? Why did he hold some stuff back from the great multitude and then let the, the truth be known unto his disciples, man? Okay. And it wasn't just the uh, uh, the 12 either. He was, it was more, the, uh, it was the 12 main ones, right? Um, let me, let me see real quick. Cause I don't want to, um, cause what's that scripture? He sent them out two by two. He sent out like, uh, and I think, I, let me see real quick. I'll pause it for time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it says Luke 10 and 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. See, so the Lord, you have the 12 main disciples, of course. But you had uh, also 70 other men that the Lord was dealing with. So they also got to know the mysteries of the kingdom. That's why they had such a position of power to be able to go out two by two. See? Just in case they try and say, no, no, we're just dealing with the 12, uh, uh, 12 disciples first and then it's the whole world. No. Okay? This thing is for a few people. Well, let's get the... Wow, now it's a totally different lesson, man, from what I originally uh, make another one, Lord willing, about just going into, you know, a her our heritage. So the world to come for a few. So what, is you, what, is, what are you talking about? The second edges eight and one. And he answered me saying, the most high hath made this world for many, but the world to come for a few. See? And that's why when you know the truth and you repent, like Yahweh Shah himself said, unto you is given the mysteries of the kingdom, you know, unless they see with their eyes and begin to perceive and then repent and be healed. The Lord doesn't want that because the world to come isn't for them. The Lord only wants the elect to know this 100% truth and to understand because this world to come is only for the elect. You know, to get it on the first round trip without having to be reincarnated as a newborn baby, man. So this world to come is only for a few. That's talking about the kingdom. So therefore, only a few is going to begin to truly understand it. But again, the so-called Christian will tell you that everybody can get it. Verse two, I will tell thee a similitude, Esdras, as when thou axed the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of. Even so is the course of this present world. See? All the dirt in the earth, but only in a few spots is there gold. That's the comparison of the little few who are actually going to understand this full truth, repent and be saved. But a so-called Christian, once again, will tell you the whole earth is for everybody. There's gold all over the earth. That's what a so-called Christian would tell you, man. Go outside in your backyard right now. There's gold there because everybody can be saved. Everybody can get it. That's what they're trying to tell you. It ain't adding up. This is verse three. There be many created, but few shall be saved. Why is that? Because half of it is right here. Because you literally have angels blocking people so that they don't get it. That's part of it as well, man. Come on, don't you get it, man? Please just get it, man. You know, like, God damn. It's, 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 it's clear to see. See how far we is, man. All right, so Khan, I, I I really wanted to get into 
because they're going, oh, this is like I just said earlier. You know, I'm watching a Pasa Tahar's lesson like three minutes in. And you know, that was just getting me fired up. You know? <laughs> so I wanted to do my own, my own, my own thing, man. Between the uh, 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 Captain Tazari out debating that so-called Christian, man. So going into Gentiles, which like Apostle Tahar said in the book of Maccabees, that's why they don't want to deal with the Apocrypha. But anyway, this is the definition of the word heritage, right? It says, what does heritage mean, actually? Heritage is a person's unique inherited sense of family identity. So, hey, that Amos 3 and 1 through 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Going into who? The Israelites. So the Israelites is a family. So-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Natives. We are all one huge family. We're not different, man. We're not two completely different, extreme people on the planet. No, we're the same. We're of the same family, man. So-called Native Americans, that's my brothers, man. So-called Negroes, that's my brothers. So-called Hispanics, those are my brothers, man. We are a family. That's what heritage is going into. Right? So, uh, Israelite, being an Israelite is having a heritage, man. You're a part of a family. It says the values, traditions, culture, and artifacts handed down by previous generations. So part of having a heritage is first and foremost, you got to be of that family. You got to be of that bloodline. And secondarily, part of a heritage, part of that bloodline and that family comes with values that we have, traditions that we keep, a culture that we keep. Thus makes up the heritage of being an Israelite. Our traditions is our holy days, you know. The values that we keep is 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 how we should conduct ourselves, man. The law, statutes, and commandments. All right, our culture, once again, the law, statutes, and commandments. How we eat, you know, how we dress, the garment down to the foot. That's part of our culture. It says and artifacts. Hey, the Holy Bible. That's part. Guess what, buddy? That's part of our heritage. But an Edomite feels like since he can buy one, he can automatically be, be down. It says handed down by previous generations. And we're going to get all the artifacts. Well, these Edomites destroyed some of the artifacts and they're hiding some of the artifacts. Okay. So now. With this heritage. Making up an Israelite. If you're outside of this heritage, this bloodline and the values we keep and the traditions and cultures we keep. That's what makes you a Gentile, a Gentile, somebody who's not an Israelite. So now guess what? If you begin to stop keeping those values, you stop keeping the traditions. You don't keep the culture anymore. Guess what? Since you're living like a Gentile, you're living outside of your heritage of being an Israelite. Then guess what? Essentially, now you're a, you're a Gentile. But Israelite has certain values and traditions and cultures that we keep. But if you're not keeping them, then we look at you like you disgusting, like you're a Gentile, man. Which is why. Going back into uh, Jeremiah. This is why an Israelite can be considered the Gentile. When you no longer keep the values, traditions, and culture, you're still an Israelite by blood, by family, of course. And hell, even family ain't family, man. You know, people, niggas will tell you that in the world all the time. Now, are they technically really family? Yes, they is. But you can cut them off and say, nah, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? You ain't family, family don't do each other like that. But technically, nigga, y'all is still family, man. Y'all still cousins, whatever, uh, uncle, net, whatever the case may be, whether you like it or not. But you can go ahead and say, man, you ain't family no more. Oh, wow. I'm looking at the highway. A truck just passed, said family dollar on it. But the point is family. And I'm talking about family, man. You know? So anyway, man. Oh, praise God. So, you know. Hey, man. Whether you like it or not, you still family, man. But you can cut off family 
And what happens when you cut off family and say, man, you ain't my family no more? Now you're looking at him like he's a regular nigga, like you don't know him. So it's the same thing when you abandon your value, tradition, and culture, man. That makes you no longer the family. What they said that Edomite when he flipped over the table for Thanksgiving, you ain't part of the family. If you're going to act like that, you're not part of this family. He's like, Dad, really? And he flipped over the table, man. Now, just because he said that, does that mean he's not technically his son no more? Yeah, of course he still is. But he's cutting them off. This is the Gentile situation, man. So like I said, when you don't keep that, those values or traditions and culture no more, you cut off from the family. Which is Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So now we're not looking at you like your family. We're looking at you like a stranger. What's another term for stranger? Gentile, actually. Right? And you can read the rest. For time's sake, um, that's why I'm just going to get all... Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, Ephesians 2 and 12. And then you got 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. Ephesians 2 and 12. So, guess what, man? When Esau beat our heritage out of us, and the Lord, going into the dry, Valley of the Dry Bones, which clearly tells you that the dry bones are the Israelites, when we come back into our culture and our heritage, when we came back into it, right, we begin to come back to our heritage. And that's what we're telling our people who are lost, lost sheep of the house of Israel. They're lost from what? They're lost from their family. They're lost from their values, their culture and traditions. Well, that's why we're out there to tell them to repent and come back. Stop being Gentiles. You can come back as a family. What they said in power. Remember in power with Mary J. Blige and shit and her son, her son, uh, Cain. Her son, Canaan. She told him, yo, you ain't a part of this family no more. Don't come back around here. Or I'll pull a trigger on you myself. But then guess what? Her brother, his brother, said, yo, guess what? Mom said you could be a part of the family again, man. If you do this, mom said you could be a part of the family again. So we're out there to tell our people, look, you can be a part of the family again. You don't have to be looked at as a Gentile no more. You could be, you know what I'm saying? You can get back with it. Repent. Begin to keep the values, the traditions and culture once again. And you can be a part of the family. We don't look at you as a, we won't look at you as a Gentile no more. That's why you got Ephesians 2 and 12. That at that time you were without Hamashiach. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. See? Strangers. And strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope and without the Messiah in the world. But now in Hamashiach Yahushai, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Hamashiach, see? So through Yahushai, you can come back into the fold. The so-called Jews that were there at the time, are, pe are the Pharisees, you can never come back. It was like, fuck you. You ain't never coming back into this. But I spit on you, man. You know what I'm saying? But with Yahweh Shai's mercy, Yahweh Shai's mercy calling us back, Yahweh Shai was like, yo, you can come back in. Repent. You can be an Israelite again. You know what I'm saying? This is your heritage, man. You see? So, don't you get it, man? Please, just, just, just get it, man. It's as simple as that. Please, just get it, man. All right? Yeah, you got to have fun with this thing, man. I, I enjoy doing lessons, man. You know, I enjoy learning. Uh, 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 studying. And, and, and being able to have this understanding, man. It's something to... You, you, we got to rejoice in it, man. Because the script say, Bless your eyes for they were able to see. So, Lord, one was edifying. And I'm going to say, Shalom.